Hello everyone. Thank you so much for attending our session. First of all, we really want to thank Sneha to give us an opportunity to showcase our work. Today we will discuss about an innovative approach to achieve compositionality efficiently using multi-version object-based transaction system to exploit multiple code. I, Archis Somani and Shweta Kumari, working as a research scientist at Huawei, India. This is the outline of today's presentation. First, I'll talk about introductions to software transactions memory system, in which we will see the working of STM method. Then I'll talk about introductions to object-based software transactions memory system, where we will talk about the problem with the object-based STM. In the next sections, we will see how we overcome those problems and proposed a new innovative algorithm called as multi-versions object-based software transactions memory system. From this section onward, Shweta will explain our proposed algorithm. Then we will talk about the experimental evaluation and conclusion followed by the future work. Let's talk about the introductions to STM. First, we will see what is the transaction and history. Transaction is a sequence of instructions guaranteed to execute atomically. History is the concurrent executions of transactions. So this will be clear with one example. Here we have considered two concurrent transactions T1 and T2, where R stands for read and W stands for write, and they are working on some shared data item such as X, Y, and Z. And here T1 and T2 are the commit of transactions T1 and T2 respectively. So this is the concurrent executions of transactions, which is called, called as a history of an STM. Now let's talk about what is the software transitions memory systems are? STMs are a convenient programming interface for a programmer to access the shared memory using concurrent thread without worrying about the concurrency issues. Traditionally, STM exports the following methods such as T begin, here T stands for the transactions, transactions read, write, try commit, and try board. Initially, all the transactions invoke the T begin operations to get the unique timestamps. We will understand each of the remaining function, operations functionalities in the working of the STM. Here, these operations are working at a read-write level. So we refer to these as a read-write STM. So in a layman term, what exactly the STM is? STM is providing a multi-threaded library, which exports the following methods to the user who does not know anything about the parallel programming or multi-threading. He or she can use these methods to make their sequential program to run concurrently. And they will be overcome with the burden of parallel programming and any concurrency issues such as deadlock, live log, priority inversion. Everything will be internally handled by the software transactions memory system. So we are the developer of the STM library. We develop a couple of libraries and show the performance over the state of the art STM library. Let's discuss about the working of the STM. So this is the shared memory where multiple threads are concurrently working on it. For sake of simplicity, here we have considered two transactions T1 and T2. They have their own local log. Here we are referring the optimistic STM where the transactions first write into its own local log and during the, during the end of the executions, they will validate their log and commit their changes in the shared memory. So let's say transactions T1 wants to read. So first it will read from the shared memory. Similarly, T2 will also read from the shared memory. Same as let's say transactions T1 wants to write something, so they will write into its own local log due to this optimistic nature. Similarly, T2 will also write into its own local log. And let's say transactions T1 wants to commit its changes into the shared memory. So before the commit, it will validate its changes in the shared memory. If there will not be any inconsistencies, then T1's log will be permanent into the shared memory and T1 returns committed. Similarly, T2 will also validate its on local log during the try commit phase. If there will be any inconsistencies, then T2's log will not be permanent into the shared memory and T2 returns aborted. Eventually, it will retry later. So this is like high level working of the SPMs, like how the operations of the transactions or SPMs interact with the shared memory. Now let's talk about the introductions to object-based SPMs. In the literatures, many researchers have proposed object-based SPMs and show the performance of OSTMs over the read-write STMs. Let's first discuss about what is the object-based STM. 
object based stms operate on the higher level objects rather than primitive read and write which act upon the memory locations ostm for that it export transactions begin insert delete lookup and try commit for q it exports transitions begin and q dq and try commit for stack it exports transitions begin push pop and try commit let's understand the motivations towards object based stms so we will explain the motivations with one example here we have consider a concurrent list which consists of set of keys in the increasing order of their id where we have a key k2 k5 k7 k8 and k9 here we have considered two concurrent transitions t1 and t2 transition t1 wants to look up the key k5 and k8 where the transition t2 wants to perform a delete on the key k7 we explain the executions of these two transitions in the form of a tree structure so this is the list so every transactions which wants to identify any key they have to start from the head of the list so here assume like transition t1 is uh, working on the lookup k5 so they start identifying the key k5 from this uh, head of the list so it's reading the key k2 and then key k5 so these two transitions are executing concurrently so assume like transitions t2 came before the executions of the second operations of transitions t1 so similarly t2 also start reading from the head of the list and identifying the key k7 to perform the delete operations so here it's read the key k2 k5 and k7 after identifying the key k7 it perform the logical deletions by marking the node key k7 and for the physical deletions it change the pointer from k7 to k8 by up updating the pointer of key k5 and then assume like uh, transition t1 perform its uh, remaining operations one can observe that at the layer 0 or lower layer where we have a read or write operations this red color depicts the conflict so the meaning of the conflict here is when two operations belong to different different transactions working on the same key and one of the transactions is right or one of the operations is right then we can say they have a conflict and when we can say any concurrent executions is correct if you will get any equivalent serial schedule then we can say the concurrent executions is correct but one can see that at a, at this layer 0 we have a cyclic conflict from t1 to t2 and again t2 to t1 and due to that we cannot get any equivalent serial schedule to get any equivalent serial schedules we have to abort any one of the transactions which limits the concurrency so this is this example is showing the limitations of read write stm now we will see the motivations of object based stms while seeing at a layer 1 where we have a higher level operations here l stands for lookup and d stands for the delete if you will observe carefully all the operations are working on different different keys so here lookup is working on key k5 delete on key k7 and look up on key k8 so they don't have any conflict so if we'll work at this schedule then we can get any equivalent serial schedule but the challenge here is how we can jump from layer 0 to layer 1 so to do this first we have to identify or make sure all the high level operations events should be isolated from the other transactions high level operations so here for sake of simplicity we have already considered all the high level operations are isolated among each other so we can prune this layer 0 to layer 1 and after pruning this we will get the schedule where we have a look up on key k5 delete on key k7 and look up on key k8 as all the operations are working on different different keys so we can commute them in any or any order and we will get the sequential schedule and eventually we will get the serial history where we have a t1 followed by t2 or t2 followed by t1 because they don't have any conflict if you will work at the higher level so this is the advantage of working at the object based stms where we have a more semantic informations about the operations and accept more number of transactions and achieve the high performance as compared to the read write stm now let's understand the limitations with object based stms here we will explain the limitations with object based stms with one example where we have a two concurrent transactions t1 and t2 here t1 is doing the two lookup operations on data items k2 and k1 whereas transitions t2 is performing the two insert operations on the same data item k2 and k1 here one can observe that this schedule is not serializable because first operations of transitions t1 is returning the order value whereas second operations of transitions t1 is reading the new value and due to that this transition is written about it so this is the limitations of object based stms where we are not able to accept both the transitions 
now let's talk about the motivations towards multi version of the pair scheme here we will see how we are overcoming the limitations of single version of the pair scheme with the help of multiple version this is the same example which we have seen in the case of the limitations of object pair scheme where we are not able to accept this transition schema but in the case of multi version of the pair scheme while maintaining multiple versions corresponding to each data items second operations of transition c1 read or return the order value and eventually this transition returns committed and due to that we will able to accept this both the transactions and the order will be c1 followed by c2 so this is the advantage of maintaining multiple versions over the single versions of the pair schemes and due to that we are able to achieve greater concurrency as compared to the single versions of the pair scheme now from now onwards shweta will explain the detailed design and data structures of our proposed algorithm over to you shweta thanks ajit from here onwards we'll understand the proposed algorithm which is mvostm so first let's discuss the high level data structure of it so mvostm maintains the hash table with m buckets and each bucket maintain two list one is the blue list and the another one is the red list so here keys are stored in the increasing order between two sentinel nodes minus infinity and plus infinity blue link represents the actual keys whereas the red link represents the actual as well as deleted keys information so to prove the correctness of our mvostm we need the information of the deleted node as well so that's why we maintained it so here we have proposed a search efficient data structure lazy rb list which is very good to search the uh, existing keys so let's say it would be clear with the example let's say a thread wants to search for key k8 then what will happen thread need not to traverse through the deleted node uh, information it can go and directly search in the blue list and identify it through the uh, key k7 followed by key k8 so that's why it's a search efficient data structure that we have proposed a transaction ti is assigned a unique timestamp i when it invokes and here timestamps are monotonically increasing a transaction can issue four methods t lookup t insert t delete and try commit method let's just discuss the data structure for maintaining version here we are maintaining the list of lists so just consider the version list corresponding to a key k1 so here for the sake of simplicity we have shown in the version list it has three versions with timestamp 0 15 and 25 so each version maintains five fields which is timestamp value mark field return value list and the next pointer so here one can see that like these are the versions 0 15 and 25 and these are the return value list of the respective versions let's discuss the t lookup method of mvostm here the same example is there like uh, where we have key k1 and in the version list we have three versions 0 15 and 25 now the transaction t13 wants to look up on key k1 then what will happen it will identify the largest available timestamp less than 13 so among 0 15 and 25 0 is the largest available timestamp less than 13 so it will go and read the value from version 0 and then add itself into the return value list of version 0 so that is so simple in the t lookup method now let's discuss the t insert and t delete methods so what will happen like let's consider an example like where a transaction t40 wants to insert a version corresponding to key k1 then what will happen it will also identify the largest available timestamp less than 40 in the version list so among 0 15 and 25 25 is the largest available timestamp less than 40 so then it will go and see the return value list of uh, 25 so here none of the transaction is having the higher timestamp than 40 then 40 can a uh, transaction t40 can easily create a version with the value v15 and the mark field is false and the return value list is also empty uh, currently now let's consider like uh, the t40 wants to create a version but the higher timestamp transaction has already been committed with the timestamp 45 in the return value list of version list 
then what will happen like uh, t40 will identify this uh, the largest available time stamp less than uh, 40 so it will identify the 25 and then it will see like the 45 has already been committed so that's why for transaction t40 returns a bot and uh, it will not return commit so for the uh, now let's discuss the experimental evaluation in which we have considered the setup as intel xeon cpu with 32 gb ram and 56 threads so here we have proposed the and the ostm for two data structures hash table as well as list and we called it as a htmv ostm and list mv ostm and we compared the performance of both the proposed algorithm with the state of the art stms here we have considered the two workloads one is the lookup intensive workload in which we have 90 percent lookup insert is eight percent and delete is two percent an update intensive workload where the lookup is 10 percent and insert 45 percent and delete is 45 percent so this figure is showing the performance of htmv ostm so figure a is representing for the lookup intensive workload and figure b is representing for the update intensive workload here x axis represents the number of threads and y axis represents the time in second so lower is better so one can see that the performance of htmv ostm is always better than the state of the art stm for the lookup intensive workload but when we consider the update intensive workload the performance of htostm is best but the performance of htostm is neck to neck with the performance of htostm so why is this happening because here in the mvostm we are creating multiple versions so identifying the correct version is taking time so that's why this performance is neck to neck with the htostm so we can conclude that like proposed htmv ostm gives better performance while improving the concurrency this is a figure which shows the performance of list mv ostm here also we have considered two workloads uh, for the lookup intensive workload as well as the update intensive workload figure a uh, represents the lookup intensive workload in which x axis represents the number of threads and y axis represents the time in seconds so here also lower is better so one can see that like list mv ostm proposed list mv ostm performs best among state of the art stms similar to the uh, proposed htmv ostm here list ht list mv ostm is also performing neck to neck with list ostm because it maintains the multiple versions and identifying the correct version is taking time so that the performance of list mv ostm is almost neck to neck with the a performance of list ostm so here also we can conclude that like proposed list mv ostm gives better performance while improving the concurrency let's conclude the session followed by the future work so uh, mv ostm gives the insight to exploit the multi core system using an innovative framework for harnessing the greater concurrency while minimizing the number of aborts it also ensures the compositionality efficiently MV OSTMs achieve significant performance gain as compared to state of the art STM. And the applicability of proposed MV OSTM would be for the concurrent execution of the distributed transaction memory systems, storage, blockchain, persistent memory, etc. For the future work to achieve the greater concurrency for the nested execution of the transaction for MV OSTM would be an interesting avenue. Currently, we have explored the MVOSTM for hash table and list. So, MVOSTM can be enlarged to the other data structures like queue, stack, tree, etc. Detailed exploration of MVOSTM for storage such as snapshot and ino table would be an impactful for our SNIA community. Uh, thank you so much for listening our session. Please take a moment to rate this session. Your feedback is important to us. Thanks again.